Hey, it's Mo Bunnell, your host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. Welcome to this episode. It is a good one. The last couple episodes, I've had Michael Port. He and his wife, Amy, own Heroic Public Speaking, really great organization that teaches you how to give a great talk and how to use speeches to, to expand your business, to, adva to advance your relationship ecosystem. And we've covered a lot of ground on that. In this episode, I actually asked Michael a question. I wasn't sure where he was going to go with it. Those are my favorite ones. And I asked him, how in the world can we hack our own habits to keep focused on the long-term things, doing the long-term things that are really going to help us drive the book of business we want, deepen the relationships we want, and stay focused on playing the long game. And he, as predicted, didn't give me something I predicted. <laughs> I wasn't sure where the conversation was going to go, but it went somewhere great. So that's in this episode. I hope you like it. I took a lot from it, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it too. Hey, if you like this episode, make sure you catch the next one because I'm going to summarize the top three things that I learned from Michael over the several episodes that we did with him, and I learned a ton, so it's going to be good. I've already mapped that out. I'm going to record that in a second. So if you like this episode, if you like the last one, make sure you catch the next one with my top three learnings that I got from Michael Port. So, hey, one last thing before we get into it. Head over to growbigplaybook.com to get signed up for our weekly newsletter and that will drip in some great content to you every Saturday morning. You can read, usually you can read this in three to four minutes and it's always gonna get a bit, give you a tip you can use right away to enhance your book of business, to enhance your ability to deepen relationships and, and enhance your career. So that's at growbigplaybook.com. All right, here's Michael Port on how we can hack our own habits for long-term success. Hey everybody, it's Mo Bunnell, your friend and host here at Real Relationships, Real Revenue. And if you didn't catch the last three episodes with Michael Port, all about how we can use public speaking to build our book of business, deepen relationships, enhance our career, man, they were fantastic. And I'm, we're here in this fourth episode. And in this one, I'm going to ask Michael a question. And I, I my favorite questions are the ones where I don't know where it's going to go. So Michael, here we go. Let's see where this is going to take us. How can our audience, people with one foot in the delivery of some complex service, people with the other foot in business development, retention, and growth kind of activities, how can they hack their own, their own habits? What's your best advice hmm. on how they can keep focusing on the things that are going to provide value over the long term, even when the short term is biting up their heels and yanking them away from what's going to really pay off? Well, this is a very provocative question. Uh, for me personally, because um, I'm somebody that might appear to be very disciplined uh, and um, uh, and hyper conscientious, but I don't actually think I am. I, I think I'm conscientious, but I don't actually see myself as hyper disciplined. I have to force myself to focus on the long term because I'm one of those um, I'm the one of those people that loves really intense projects that take a certain period of time, I can work really, really hard and then it's done and I can move on to something else. And there's certainly benefits to, to being like that. Uh, you know, I, I've definitely benefited from it, but if you are uh, in the CEO seat of an organization, which I am at Heroic Public Speaking, um, that's not a particularly healthy way to run an organization where you do have a focus on long-term growth because you burn people out uh, in, in ways that are not uh, productive. Uh, so, so one of the things that I've done, which has been really revolutionary for us at HPS, um, is, is we've gotten deep into using OKRs. Uh, OKRs, uh, objectives, and key results. And uh, this was really Inf very, very influential for us. And it changed our habits at work. It changed the way we worked. So OKRs were originally started at Intel uh, by Andy Grove. And, uh, and then John Doerr popularized them uh, in his book, Measure What Matters. And of course, there's lots and lots of people who, who teach this, but uh, we don't, we just use them. Um, but, what it, but what helped for us is because OKRs are all about setting objectives and key results for the future in still relatively short chunks 
of time, it gave me both the best of both worlds where I had, I had longer term focus, but I could set these OKRs every quarter work ambitiously um, to achieve those specific OKRs in the quarter, feel really good about the work we're doing in that short period of time, and then reset OKRs for the next quarter. So it allowed us to do long-term growth, long-term planning, but still leverage uh, my natural way of being and then uh, uh, sort of organize the, uh, the organization around that without burning people out so that they can, you know, if they knew that if they were hitting their key, their key results, then they're doing enough. They don't actually have to work harder than that or do more than that. Because one of the most important things that I've discovered after 50 years on this planet is that sometimes enough is enough. Like more is not always better. I, I'm one of those people like, there's just not enough cookies in the bag. I don't understand why they don't put more cookies in the bag. Or if, if one is good, two is better. It's just, I've always been like that. I'm a maximizer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, there is some benefit to that. But at the same time, I've really got to mitigate uh, the, the risks associated with that way of being. Uh, and, and using OKRs has been really in, incredibly helpful for us. It's changed the way that we worked. So that means our habits around work have changed as a result. Well, I, I, we've got to dig in because one of the things that we both run similar businesses, which is fun, and about the same number of people have gone through our programs. It's really cool how we have so much alignment here. We've both got one foot in helping deliver you know, what, what people purchase from us with big teams of folks that help as well, and one foot into finding the next folks using value, being attractive, magnetic, things like that. And one of the things I've found over the last couple of years, Michael, is that like thinking out over like 10 years lets you get really aspirational. We've got like a 10 year plan. We've got three themes typically for each year. We've got weekly sprints on what, what are the, the big three, we call them MIT's most important things. What are your three MIT's this week? Our whole team does it, things like that. But to your point, it feels like quarterly is where the magic happens. That's where you can just get just aspirational enough, almost like at the project level, yep. as opposed to the task level or the dreamy level. Yep. Like at the project level, what 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 are you going to do this quarter? And picking three projects that that each person is going to focus on. So, question back to you is, hey, just let us peek inside your brain, the organization. Like, what are specific examples of your OKRs on a pro, on a quarterly level? What are what are outcomes that have happened from those? What do you focus on when you do it? Just just give us more. Sure. So, um, so if I may, it, you know, you can tell me no if you would like, but. Rather than giving specific examples of OKRs, what I'd like to do is actually focus on projects versus processes. Because, because we are process obsessed. And we have found that being process obsessed has been the thing that has driven our growth um, more than anything else. Is the smaller your organization, I mean, I, ha I, I have worked in large organizations, but it's been 30 years <laughs> since I've done that. So my time for the most part as an adult has been spent in smaller organizations that I've run. And, and when I say small, you know, I mean, you know, less than $20 million in revenue is, is small. And, uh, and what I've found is that the only way we've been able to keep our our, our, our service at the highest level we possibly can is if we know how we do it every single time and we do not deviate from it. The only way that we can keep people from burning out is making sure that everything is process oriented so they're not making things up every time they got to do uh, something new. And the value in the business, the money in the business is in the processes and then, you know, by uh, by uh, as a result, the systems that you develop for the business itself. And so OKRs are just another uh, aspect, another another process that we use to advance the goals that we have. Um, one of the things that was really helpful that I did a number of years ago is create something that I called the HPS OS, the Heroic Public Speaking Operating System. And it's a 50 page document that I suppose could be a book but it's, it details every single aspect of exactly what we do, why we do it, how we do it, who does it, and where we do it. 
And it starts with a contextual model because we build contextual models in our training and we teach people how to build contextual models. So is a contextual model, I use it for training every new person that comes into the organization. Anytime a question comes up, we go back to the HPSOS. Um, and the way that I developed it is by, you know, picking and choosing different aspects of operating systems that I've found over the years work for us and, and, and creating our own. So it, it's, it's proprietary to us. It could work for lots of other businesses, but, but I think that every single organization needs to create their own operating system. Just like every type of uh, computer has an operating system that drives uh, the work of that unit. And so without that operating system, I think we'd just be a bunch of people running around doing work. But here instead, we can be creative artists who can focus on growth um, and development, working inside these processes so that we can make sure that we're always doing things to the best of our ability because we know how to do them through these processes. Yeah, I really like that. In, in, the, in the application I can see here in really big organizations is like we train a lot of client executives and account managers at big healthcare companies, at big outsourcers. Well, that client executive basically runs a PL. They run a business um, that's about the size of what you're thinking about. Maybe it's a, a, a managing director and senior partner at a big three consulting firm that we work with. Well, they they basically have a pyramid of people that serves eight or 10 clients and and they've got an operating system they could run. So what I love about what you said is I think it's more universally true than just looking at an entire entity. We should have operating system from for the 2000 partners at the big yep. consulting firm I'm thinking of, yep. but only a few people control that, right? Yes. Just like the board or the executive team. But the little piece that we own as a senior partner, we could create an operating system for that team. That's right. Maybe we focus on the consumer industry um, in a very specific region of the world, in Europe or whatever. That's right. And somebody could come up with their operating system for the, the clients they serve, for their book of business, for their team, for their practice area or whatever. Yep. And they could implement your exact idea there. So That's right. let's let's have a speed round question. Um, what, what's your so if somebody's going to develop their their operating system for the chunk of the business that they that they control, what's the number one thing they need to get right? Or or maybe a better question if you want to go with this instead is what's the number one thing they should do to just get started mm -hmm. on it? Yeah. So um, first of all, it's important to have a really clear picture of where we're going to go. The, the operating system has to uh, be designed to go somewhere. Uh, otherwise, it's just circular and you you might sustain the business. Um, but you may not grow. Now, if the if the growth is just sustain, if the goal is sustaining and not growing, then that's fine. But make sure the operating system is designed for that. So where what what is the point of the operating system? Number one. Number two, I would encourage you to develop that operating system with everybody that you work with. So it's not something that you from the top say, here's the operating system. Let's go. Nobody is going to be interested in that operating system. So everybody here works on the operating system everybody creates their own standard operating procedures for every single thing they do in their uh in their role and so it feels much more collaborative as a result um and then you know number three uh you don't have to use okrs but but it is helpful to have some sort of system for setting and measuring um key results if you don't have some way of measuring key results the operating system may look pretty, but it's probably not going to be incredibly applicable. And so what we do is we have two different sets. We have objectives and key results and then health metrics. And this is an important differentiation because objectives and key results are aspirational. Here's what we hope to achieve in order to grow the business or grow this or improve this aspect of the business. It's not always growing as in making more money, but it might be uh, reducing, uh, uh, you know, increasing retention, or it might be improving uh, certain processes or systems or increasing our net promoter score, et cetera. But then, and this is critically important, then having a separate set of health metrics for every person in every department. Because to me, the health metrics are the things that if you, did, if you didn't do any of your OKRs, like if you didn't meet any of your OKRs, 
the business would stay healthy. So what do you need to do in every single area of the business, finance, sales, marketing, et cetera, to stay healthy? What metrics do you need to see on your website? That means we're healthy. What metrics do you need to see in the finance department? That means we're healthy. And those are getting tracked every single week, every single month, every single quarter, because that tells you we're healthy. If we didn't grow, we're going to stay this way. The objectives and key results, that's going to get you focused on growth. So you only want a handful of those, just a couple. The mistake that most people make is they start with, here's our 965 objectives for the quarter. So good luck with that. But you might have 20 health metrics in the finance department or 30 in the marketing department, but you might only have one objective and, 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 and three key results for the marketing department for that quarter, depending on the size of the department, of course. Yeah. Michael, I just love it. That was the perfect ending to these episodes because it just pulls it all together for to really figure out how do we grab control? How do we grab the reins for the chunk of the organization that we control? So thank you for that. So uh, folks, in the next episode, I'm going to recap the top three things that I learned from Michael over these episodes. I can't wait to do that. I'll do that on my own. I'm going to apply everything specifically to business development in your role, world. So, so be ready for that. So to finish up this one, Michael, where should people go to get more around Heroic Public Speaking? HeroicPublicSpeaking.com. So a lot of free resources there. Uh, there's a downloadable guide on how to deliver virtual presentations. And there's also an invitation to a free, that's free two day live stream event uh, coming up in April. Uh, and then we do those every few months. So if you missed that one, you can come uh, check out uh, a future one, uh, but go to heroicpublicspeaking.com and you can see all of that. Awesome, Michael. And I can't encourage people to go out there enough. There's a ton of resources. Michael and, and Amy's email list is fantastic. Gives you little tips and tricks all the time. Sign up for that while you're over at heroicpublicspeaking.com and grab some of those resources because they're really good. Michael, hey, thanks for being on the show. This has been awesome. I had high expectations. You beat them as I expected. So uh, thanks a ton. And I can't wait for our audience to just devour more of your content. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.